Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're trying to see, we're still on the package manager's crash course, trying to see another package. So we saw how to work with apt and apt-get. In this session, we're trying to see how to work with dpkg, right? So we're trying to see all of these things. So first of all, dpkg, right, is for Debian. And then the idea is that first you need to find a way of getting your .deb file depth file then you can use the pkg to manage it right to unpack it install it and the rest so we can use apt as we saw earlier on which apt simplifies most of the things for you but you can use apt to download the source code and then use this one to manage or you can use we get or can just go to the website like this so for example if i come back to sublime test there is this dot deb file this is what i will need to download so if i click on it i've already downloaded it here and this is what I can use dpkg to install or manage, right? So the first step is that you have to find a way of getting that file on your system, right? In case you want to install, right? Then you can manage it. And all this .dep file contains this particular directory structure. It must have a directory called Debian, which is very important. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. And within that Debian, the name must be Debian. It must have another file called control, which is going to be used for as a metadata. So in case you search with apt, all the apt search as we saw earlier on was picking and reading from this to help you understand what the package is about. Then it must have your source code in either this particular format where the file is finally going to be installed and run from, like either user bin or opt or etc. So let's see how to work with dpkg in this tutorial. So I'll just go back again to my workspace, which is here. As you can see, we don't have anything here. So the first thing is that let's see how whether we have it on the system. So dpkg, I'm on Ubuntu. So if I go with help, we see that we have it here, right? It's already already installed on the system, and there are a lot of things you can do. You can install, you can unpack, you can do these things. So we're trying to see how to work with it. So you cannot download with it, you can only download the file and then use it to use dpkg to manage. As far as I know, so let's start with this. So first of all, let's see how to list all the packages on our system, right? Using dpkg. So it's going to be, you can just go with dpkg without sudo dash list, right? And this is going to list all the packages available, not on your system, but available in our repository, and which is quite huge, right? So this is the it's checking the index. And you see that these are all the different packages that is there, which is quite huge, right? That is about so huge packages. So that these are the packages available, right? With this option here, dpkg list. You can list all the available packages, not on your system, but globally in the index. Perfect. In you can also use the same option, either this option here or dash L, which is a short format. We're also going to do the same thing. Right. So that is one of the ways you can do that. Perfect. In case you want to go out, just go to Control C. Okay. So that is how to list all the packages. Now, how do you search for a particular package to install, right? So how do you see the packages that you want to install? You can just go with this. So we can just go with dpkg. In case I want to install a package, dash s. S means status, right? So using this to check for the status of this particular package, if it's available or not. So in case I want to do a VLC, and now VLC is installed. So st the status is installed, okay, installed, right? So that means that I have VLC already installed on my system and it's going to give you information. So this information here, as we said, is what I was talking about from here. So this control file has some information, some metadata, and it's useful when dpkg or app is searching, right? So later on in the future, we'll try and see how to build a package. Perfect. Let's move on from here to another one. So this is how to search if a package is on your system or not. You can also try another one. So let's say player, as we have been doing, player CTL is not on our system, right? So player CTL is not installed on our system. That is very important. So that's how to search for a package. You can also go with this option here, the long format. The S does not stand for search, but status, right? Not there right let's try another one so i want to check for docker if docker i have docker i do not have docker 
say I want to check for something like let's check for Nginx right so if it's installed it's going to tell you that it's installed okay that is how to check if a particular package is installed on your system using this option here right or this okay now let's see how to list another way you can also check if a package is available is going with this dpkg dash l right this dash l gives you the entire list then you specify the package that you want to check so ingenious and you see that this is desired the status is already installed on the system if it's installed it's going to show if i check let's say uh, let's check the player ctl so the ingenious this give us this in case i go with the ingenious we had it here in case i go with something that's not available to so player ctl so there's no information so that is another way you can also search so you can use the s status or you can use the list and then specify that's another way you can check if a package is available or not let's see how to get the package so as i said you have to go to the website and download it or you can go to this place that is packages.ubuntu.com and then you search for the particular package so let's say i'll search for player let's make it bigger the player ctl then if i go with this search if it's available it's going to give you some information yeah sorry you have searches your search have no results so you have to configure configure them right but sometimes i prefer to go with the terminal right to make it easy so there are two options so let's get the package that we want to install so we will do the same thing as we did we can just go with sudo apt download my player ctl that's what you're using for now and now we have it there so we have gotten our package it's in case we want to install this particular pack how do we do that we just go with my package so sudo or we can just go with dpkg so dpkg dash i i sound for install then i can just pass in my package right to play a dip you must have this dot depth file in order for it to work and now it's available so if i go back and i check as we did dp pkg dash s my player ctl so now we have it already installed right so that is how to install it using, using this option right dash i you can also use install like this perfect right so either you use i like this or install or any of them is going to work now how do you uninstall a particular package right so it's going to be the same thing so sudo dpkg dash r for remove then the name of the package that you want to move so player ctl right without the deb is going to work it's going to check it if it's available and take it out right so if you are removing if it's already installed you don't need this step because it's already installed it's going to take it off so if i go with my search for it again it's not available right that's being taken off that is how to install a package with these options or remove them right using dpkg let's see how to also check for the location of a particular package that has been installed so i want you to check if vlc is installed so sudo dpkg dash s for status vlc vlc is installed i want to know where it is installed on my system right so to do that just go with sudo sudo dpkg dash capital l for location then i'll specify vlc and now this is all the places that they have vlc installed on the system right very interesting right you can see that now we have vlc installed on the system and you can see the location so we use dash l to know the location that we have for vlc that is how to know the location where a particular stuff is installed in case you also want to remove something you can also go with the r as we saw you can also use p for page so let's try with what we did earlier on i want to install it again and i want to page it or remove it you can just go with sudo dpkg dash p capital p 
then the name of that so player CTO. And this is going to remove it together with other configuration, right? So now it's no more available. If I search for it, it's not available. Perfect. Let's see one more thing we can also do. So we had our file here. In case we want to see the content before we install it, we can use dpkg, right? Hope it's bigger enough, dash C, right? For content, then I'll just go with my file. So, and now this is going to show the content of this particular system without installing it. And you can see that all of them have dot .user, dot .user bin, dot .user bin, player, blah, blah, blah. This is the location, as I said, where it's going to be installed, right? So it's very, very important. So it must have this, it must have this location. So if I check it out, that is it, right? Very simple and very important. That's how to see the content. You can use dash C, or you can also use this option, dash dash content. Both of them are the same, right? It's supposed to be, I think, content, I think it's supposed to be C, double C, yeah, content, not double C dot, but S. And this is going to show you the location that is going to be installed together with the content. So this is the content of this, and this is where it's going to be installed to later on, right? Very simple. So you have seen how to use DPKG to do some stuff. So now to use to install, remove. You have seen how to see the content of it. Now let's see how to unpack it, right? So as I said, it has a structure. So in case I want to unpack this entire stuff that I have, I can just go with dpkg that dash unpack. Then I just pass in the name there. It's giving us an error because it requires super privileges for me to unpack it. So sudo, and now it has been unpacked perfectly, right? Without installing, right? So selected unpackage, blah, blah, blah. So that's how to unpack it. You can also extract the content of it as we saw earlier on using another nice package called dpkg dep, which is a group of tools which is useful for building and designing and working on your package, right? So dash dep, then you just go with dash r for extract, then the name of the package, so player CTL, and then you can just give the directory that you want to put it there. So let's first create our directory. So here there's nothing there. I'm going to create a directory called player CTL temp, right? And then I'm going to unpack it there. So dpkg dash dep dash r for extract. Then the name of the package that I want to extract the depth file, then the location. I want to do it here. And now if I go back into my player CTL, you can see the structure. So the structure, as I said, is this. We have, I suppose I want to do three dot dash L. Let's go with level two. So the structure that it must have this Debian is a very important stuff. And now this is the location where it's going to be installed. Remember that this is the same as we saw. Let me switch so that you see it better. I'll switch. So remember that in the previous instance, we tried to do this sudo dpkg. dash L, capital L, then we specify the name of the location to player CTL. And this one, this one give us a list of where the package is located, right? So if we go to the same directory, so tree, then I go to my player CTL template, the one we extracted re recently, then I just go with dash L for level two, just two levels. You see that it has the same structure. So this is very important at the origin version. So this is for Debian, right? Or DPKG to know that this is a Debian package and must look at this to get information, the metadata, and it must check the sum to make sure that it's the right one. Then this is used to help build it. And this is the actual source code. That is what the designer or developer does. And this is a structure. So this structure is where finally when I install this particular package, it's going to be installed to. It's going to automatically go to my user bin or user share and put the other code there. That is why you could see it here. So we have user, which is this one. We have bin, 
which is this one you have share and then so if i go into my so cd into user to my player into my user to bin so we have the actual code there this particular stuff there that is what you see right so the structure is very important because it's very useful when you are building the package right when you are building the bm package that is how it works so that is how to work with dpkg i hope you have learned something and i hope i was not talking too much so in another tutorial we're trying to see how to build a package from scratch using debian or and then dpkg see in another session stay blessed so the tutorial is going to be below the links and everything is going to be here so you can also check it out all the stuff all the code is there right so i hope i did not miss anything everything is available so there's a recap so to recap you can use dpkg to do some interesting stuff right you can also use gd gdb to also help you install stuff see you another time let me know your opinion and check the link below for some interesting materials to help you master machine learning and then python bye